All right, let us begin by taking a look at the board. The board is divided in a whole bunch of places. Over here, we have what they call the gates. Cards will be laid out here showing barrels of beer coming to your, to your venue. Down here, we have tents. There are six tents, but it says in the game that one of them will be closed off in the, for the morning session. This colorful thing is your track for the 10 rounds of the game. You're going to put one patron on each round at the start of the game, and this is going to keep a sort of track of how much longer, the, you, how many rounds are left in the game. Because each time a tent closes, we'll get to that, one of these will go away and you'll say, oh, there's nine rounds left. Okay, over on this side of the board, you have the different types of beer and what their supplies are. For example, down here is the stout. Ten cards on the stout space. Ten cards on the, is that the Pilsner? Ten cards... As you yeah. can see. Yeah, as you can see, yes. This, this one's pale lager, and this one is vice. And, and this one was um, a, a Pilsner, a nice light beer. And also there's a marker for each one of these that goes underneath the stack of uh, barrels of beer. And this is basically how you set up the board to begin the game. Each person will get their own little screen behind which you're going to get five of these tiny little patron things, a stack of 20 monies, is a little bit less if there's more than three players, and you get your meeple of choice. In this case, this is the yellow guy. And this information would be secret for, for the game. Also, you're going to get some cards to begin with the game. The next group of cards we're going to divide up are the beer supply cards. There are six kinds of beer plus a wild card. Each deck has our numbered one through seven. To begin the game, we leave the five, six, and the seven out for the afternoon and evening play. You'll know the afternoon and evening by the amount of rounds that are being taken. These here, are the lighter color, are the morning. These are the afternoon, and there's four in the evening, so a total of 10 rounds. After having taken the five, six, and the seven out of all the decks, including the wild card deck, you shuffle them up. They're more or less shuffled. You lay them out onto the gates. In this order, when that's done, you take the three tapped out cards and shuffle them into the deck and they become the draw pile. The next step for each type of beer, there are two double barrel cards, two of each. They will have to be shuffled up and each player would get two. And from this deck, you would take your two, and you're not showing them to anybody, and you have to make sure you have two that are different. If you have two that are the same, you have to return one and make sure you get two that are different. And you place them behind your screen. Nobody can see what they are, and the unused ones are out of play for the rest of the game. On your turn, you're going to have a choice of three different actions. The first one, is to auction supply cards. Essentially, you're going to be bidding on cards up in this area to bring down to the various tents. A second action, which we'll get into later, is to sell one of the barrels that you happen to have behind your, your screen. You're not allowed to sell the ones that are double barreled, but this is an action that will occur later. The third action is to close a tent, which actually gives you kind of a scoring round. We'll get into that after a while. 
But the first action is to bid on one of the gates. There are three gates. Now the rule book does not specify this, but it seems to indicate that these cards at the gate should be face up. And this actually would help in deciding which ones you're going to want to bid on. You're given two different markers. This is the first player marker, this little blue diamond. And this heart, we assume, is the marker which is going to show which column, which gate is going to be auctioned on in that particular round. I'll be the first player because I'm the thirstiest. And I have chosen that I want to make this row of cards available for auction. I do not bid first. The person to my left, which is Glenn, is the person who's going to bid first. He, first. Secret, he takes from his secret stash the amount of coins he wants to bid and places them in front of his screen. Then the next person would have to bid higher. The bidding only goes around once. You only get one bid. You may pass. Our third player is passing. The next bid now returns to the active player. He may pay one more and win the auction, or he can accept my bid and let me have the cards. Let's say in this case that I just allow it to go on and I'll accept his bid of five coins or whatever, yeah, five coins, and add that to my collection. And then and Glenn I, gets the cards. And then I would get the three cards in this gate. I would have to discard one of them. I'll discard this one. And I would have to play the other two on a tent. They can be on any tent, but they have to be two different places. The person who has won the auction now acquires beer. This card lets you take one or two beer barrels of device beer. This card lets me take one or two barrels of the lager beer. When you take them, you have to pay for them. And it's based upon how many beers you buy. If I buy two beers, I have to pay three coin. If I take one beer, I have to pay one coin. So, I will take two of the vice beers. I will have to pay three coin. The coin go here. behind the, the vice beer. In the case of this beer, I can pay three coin, gain two cards, for it. Now one of the double barrels I had was also a dark lager. So I now have four dark lagers in my hand. Which is secret and, and, from the rest and, of us. And that depends on the end of the game during the scoring who has the most of one kind of beer in their hand. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to replace three more cards out from there. Notice that this one happens to have some wilds. The wilds can be used for any beer. And we begin the next round of auctioning. Glenn is now the first player, and he's going to decide which of the, the three gates goes to be uh, up for auction. I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to bid three coins on, on that particular gate. Now I have the option to pay four coin and win the auction or let Gary have the auction. And I will let Gary have the auction for okay. three. All right, I pay the three to Glenn and I take the three cards. Of these three, as before, I have to discard one. I'm going to discard the one. And I have a choice of placing these two cards on any of the tens. I can't play a two on top of a three. I must play the two on one of the empty tens. However, I can cover up this three with a four. So that now, this particular tent is actually going to score seven. The four plus the three that was there before. You must always play a card that is higher 
than the highest card shown in that particular tent. The second thing that you can do during your turn, instead of doing the auction, you can sell a card in your hand and acquire money. So for instance, say I have one of these in my hand. I can then sell the card and take the money in the supply for it. Or I could choose one of the other beers and take half of the money rounded up. In this case, I'm just going to take the three coin for that one card. And that will be my entire turn for this round. The third choice that you could have on your turn is to close a tent. This and is the only way to score points. Let us say that it is my turn. I have the first player marker and I've decided I want to close this tent. It's the first round so I'm going to take the first people marker here and add it to my secret stash of them in the back. Glenn, though, gets to make the first bid. I'm going to look at that, and I am going to bid four patrons on this. You, you vote with patrons. Four of my patrons are attending this tent in my effort to win the bid. He puts his little meeple on top to show that that's his bid. Now, anybody else would have to bid higher. Bill is going to pass in this case, but I see that I've got four of that particular barrel, including the two, including the double barrel, and so I'm going to try and take the bid on that. I will bid five. Three, four, five, and I'd add my little meeple on top of it. And now the bidding is closed, and everybody has to reveal how many barrels of stout they have. As we saw, I have four of them. It turns out I have five, so I have stolen the points. I would receive seven points for the, having... The total of the cards that are in this pile, which happens to be seven. And we get those from the point cards. Five, six, seven. And I would take those behind my deck and the other player would get half rounded up, which would be four. All right. I get second place, I get four. All right. The patrons are then divided among the players who did not vote on this card and any leftover ones would be stacked up here in that kind of a sequence for later in the game. Later on in the game, in, we have an afternoon and an evening phase. When we reach these phases of the game, you would shuffle the five and the six card into the supply, and when you reach the evening, you would shuffle the seven cards into the supply. After you've gone through 10, ten, ten closings, the game ends, the person with the most points behind the screen wins the game. Occasionally you will see that the cards in a particular gate cannot be played. Notice that these are all ones, and what we have at every tent is cards like the four, the three, which are higher than that. In that case, you put one of these closed markers on that particular gate. When all three gates are closed, you're no longer to choose auctioning as your, as your choice for your action that round. You must choose one of the two other auctions, either sell a card or close a tent. Another event that can occur is when you turn over a card and it is a tapped out card, an empty beer glass. Nothing happens the first time. The second time you draw one of these, you look at your tents and you find the tent with the highest card, or if they're both fours in this case, this deck, because it adds up to seven. You take these cards, remove them from the and tent, and then you would shuffle and, and reshuffle everything. everything back up 
this leaves one new new tent available. This would have been empty because that's why we're drawing cards. And then you would, and then you would draw three new ones for there. And now, and play would continue. And it empties out a tent. And that's how you play Oktoberfest. We enjoyed the game. Thanks for watching our video. And hit the subscribe button. Thanks. From Geezer Gamers. <laughs> I love it. Ah. I had a good time doing that. <laughs>